First on our list of the six mistakes I see DIYers making when wiring up outlets or receptacles is using these backstab connections. On the back of most outlets or receptacles, you're going to find these little holes, and these are known as backstab terminals. Now, nobody likes to have their back stabbed. Just think of it the same way. Just avoid stabbing someone in the back, and that includes your outlets. These are one-time use, and they have a poor amount of contact area with the wires themselves. Now, my house right now that I live in, it's seven years old, and the entire thing was done by a professional electrician, of course, and every outlet that was done in the house uses the backstab terminals. Now, I've already experienced issues where I remove the faceplate, I remove the outlet, and sure enough, one of these things comes out or comes free or was loose, not stabbed in there properly, and I've already got an issue immediately upon taking this thing out of the box. So, don't use these. These are just bad news all around. The second mistake we DIYers tend to make with wiring outlets and switches is using the wrong screwdriver. Now, part of this is because there are so many different options out there. You can use a slotted screwdriver, you can use a Phillips, you can use a Robertson drive, and you can use the ECX, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. The flathead actually works fine. You know, a lot of people, even professional electricians, still use this today as their go-to, and it can work, but it's not optimal for this. The most commonly used thing, and what I've used my entire life, is a Phillips screwdriver. It works, right? But it does tend to cam out a little bit or start to strip the head when you put any sort of force on there, and you have to really push hard against the screw to get it to hold in place. So it's good, but it's not the best. Not long ago, I was looking at the shape of the screw here, and I realized, I'll bet I could fit a Robertson inside there. Now, if you're not familiar with the Robertson drive, it's invented by a gentleman up in Canada quite a while ago. It's similar to a square drive, but a Robertson has a little bit of a taper to the sides, and it actually does fit excellent. This is a Robertson number one, is what you want to use there, and it fits so well. It fits perfectly in there, like you can see here. It's not the best, but it's a close second. Then, I recently ordered one of these screwdrivers from Klein. Now, one of the reasons I bought this specific 15-in-1 is because it comes with these bits. This is the ECX, and that's the one I mentioned earlier. Now, the ECX, you can think of it as a combination between a Robertson drive and a slotted screwdriver head. So, it's got both of those in there, and basically it takes up all of the negative space inside your screw head, and it's perfectly meant for and designed for electrical screws like this. So it is the optimal way to use uh, drivers for any sort of screw for outlets, switches, and things like that. Most of these are available on Amazon, and some of them are only available at Harbor Freight or Lowe's or Home Depot. We'll talk more about that one right now, which is getting the insulated version. So an insulated version, this is the best of all worlds. Now, we as DIYers tend to be the least experienced with electrical work, obviously. We didn't go to school for this or train for it. So, the more we can do to safeguard ourselves and put those safety precautions in place, the better. They're fully insulated and they're rated for up to 1,000 volts. Now, if you like the Milwaukee brand, you can pick up one of these from Milwaukee as well. This, again, comes in the same set of three. It's basically identical other than these little uh, slots that are in the top and that cost about 21 bucks, at least at the time of this recording, and I will put links to all of these in the description below. Now, there is no sponsor for this video. All of the products that I'm using in here are just things that I've purchased with my own money. Now, if you're a DIYer like me, and you probably are if you're watching this, or you certainly know someone who is, you know that sometimes you don't need to buy something when you can DIY something for a lot more money and a lot more time, probably. But, if you're one of those people who likes to get into it and figure things out, you can get shirts like this in my merch store. There's links in the description below, so feel free to check that out. That helps support the channel, and I appreciate it very much. Number three on my list is stripping too much or too little wire. When you're making a shepherd's hook to wrap around the screws, if you do too much exposed wire here, so if I take this, though, and try to put this, um, let's use the right side at least, and try to put this on my screw terminal like this, you know, that works. It's on there and I can fasten that down, and I've got a good solid connection there. There's a lot of contact between the screw, the plate underneath, and the wire. The problem is, all of this is hanging out, and this is dangerous. This is more contact points where other wires could touch it, you could touch it, it could touch another outlet next to it, or a metal junction box. So that's bad news when you've got too much wire hanging out. Similarly, if you take a section of wire that's too short and you try to use that, let's say we try to create a little hook with this, Maybe you have to do something like that. That's not ideal. So let's say we put this one in here like so. 
So what we've created there is a real lack of contact. So a lot of it is touching the insulation or the jacketing of the 14 gauge wire here. And there's probably some back inside there that's touching, but it's really minimal compared to what it should be. If you cut the right amount, then you're gonna get a good solid connection all the way through. Now to help you out with this, just about every single outlet on the market today has a wire strip gauge. So on this one, for example, you can see it right here, and it's typically three quarters of an inch for a shepherd's hook. A lot of different wire strippers have a little depth gauge that you can use if you want to, and I can just set that to right there where that black mark is so it gets right to the teeth, and then I'm just gonna push, pull it off, and then you can see it cut right to that line. Pull that off and I've got the exact right amount. And you can even double check it right here with the wire strip gauge. Now obviously you don't need special strippers to do that. You can use some traditional plate stamped ones like this, uh, a pair of these. You can go with the automatic wire strippers like these. And these have a little depth stop on them as well. A lot of people don't realize that your wire strippers, these traditional kind here, have a little hole in them that you can use you can just put your wire inside there, just get it right towards the edge. And then from there, just bend up and around, get kind of a nice tight hook there. And there we go. We've got a perfect little hook to put around the shaft of the screw. That's a pretty good set right there. Fourth on my list is adding too many wires to terminals that aren't designed to handle that. Most of the time, any one screw can only handle one wire and is only designed to handle one wire securely. There are exceptions, and we'll look at some of those in just a second, but generally speaking, you have to use the amount of wires that the design of this UL-approved outlet is intended to use. And most of the time, that's one. So instead of trying to cram a couple of different wires under one single terminal, for example, there is a much easier way, and that is to use pigtails. A really common example that I've come across personally is when I want to install a smart light switch. Let's say I need to connect these two here. I'm just gonna disconnect these because we don't want those double connected like this to the terminal. That's definitely against code. So I'm gonna take these off and then I can either cut these uh, where they are, which is what I'll prefer to do so we don't have to reuse the bent parts. So I'm gonna snip these. I'll strip the ends again. So now that I've got these two, I'm gonna take a sacrificial third piece and this is the pigtail. The pigtail is basically just the output from multiple inputs. But I'm just gonna put all three of these together, the two coming in and the one going out. And then I'll use some lineman pliers to twist all these together. And ideally you're gonna twist until the insulated portion twists a couple of times itself beyond just the exposed area like that. So I've got a really good twist going on there for sure. And then I'm gonna put my cap on, thread it in, make sure it's in there really snug. And then you do the pull test. So I'm gonna remove these a little bit, make sure that doesn't come out, that doesn't come out, and that doesn't come out. So then I've got my pigtail, and I've got my two in like this, and then one coming out that can go to the outlet or the light switch in this case. An even easier method of this is using these little Wago lever nuts. These are little connectors that are really simple to use. Because they're transparent, you can actually see that the wires went all the way through to the end like that. And then you can see the bus in there and make sure there's a good connection. The thing I love about these is that you can just remove these anytime. So let's say you wanna get rid of that one and swap that out for a different outlet or something. You can do that really easily. And then you can just push the new one back in, lock it down, and you're good to go. Now certain outlets actually have what's called side wiring, and that's like this one here where you can put two different wires in each screw. Mistake number five that we DIYers often make is going against the grain by accidentally putting our hooks in the wrong direction. This is just a simple one, but again, we wanna make sure we always have a nice tight hook like this and that we are facing it in the right direction. You wanna work with the grain as it were. So as we're taking a screw like this and tightening it clockwise, you wanna make sure that the open side is on the right and so that it tends to tighten down rather than work against it. So as we tighten it down like this, it's gonna have a tendency to actually close that little loop there and have great contact all the way through. The mistake I often see, and I've been guilty of myself, is that we'll put the hook a little bit too loose like this, a little too open, and then we'll also put it the wrong direction, opening to the left. So as you keep tightening it like this, then you're actually tightening it right out of the seat. 
like that, and it just popped free. And then even there, it looks like it's okay, but what can happen pretty easily is it just can break right away like that. This issue is even more common for stranded wire, which is less common for outlets for sure, but it's certainly common with light fixtures. So if you ever have to do a tightening of a stranded wire, make sure that that opening is on the right side if you're tightening it down with a screw terminal and the shepherd's hook. Now before we get to our last item, I have put links to all of these products in the description below. So if you've seen it in this video, you can find the link for it in the description below. And by buying something from those links, it gives me a tiny kickback, doesn't cost you a penny more, and it helps support the channel. So I appreciate you using that. If I miss something, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to see if I can get that for you. For number six, let's say you've done everything right. You've got these beautiful little shepherd's hooks on here. You've got great contact. You've got the right amount. You're using the right screwdriver. All is good. There's one thing left that often gets overlooked. And again, one I've definitely been guilty of, which is not tightening down the extra screws that aren't being used. If you look at the profile here, you can see that nothing sticks out as far as that screw right there. And so that's a problem. That could touch the outlet next to it. It could touch a metal junction box, a bare ground wire that's in the box, anything like that. So to reduce the likelihood of any issues, just tighten it down. Now that's out of the way and much less likely to cause any issues in the future. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.